Our next inductee, Martin, uh, I met him over 30 years ago, just across the street here at Metro's Gymnasium. And uh, from the first time I met him, his dedicated, determined, and driven spirit were very evident. Actually, it was more annoying than anything else most of the time. I think all of us that have ever come up uh, across a player that we call annoying, the reason we call them annoying is because they were usually kicking our butts on the, on the field somewhere or on the courts. And Martin was definitely that person. And over the next four years at Metro, he strived to make sure every other team in this league was, uh, was definitely annoyed by him. He was a four-year starter here at Metro, four-year letter winner, three-time RMSL, Rocky Mountain Intercollegiate Soccer League, all academic teams, so not only on the field, but in the classroom. He, uh, he was second team RMISL Soccer League in 1985, first team in 1986. I joined the team in 1985 with him his junior year, and I, I see a correlation there, Martin. When I joined the team, you started winning some of these awards, so I think that, <laughs> that makes sense. He was a Rocky Mountain Intercollegiate Soccer Player of the Month in September of 1986, and that month he had back-to-back -back hat tricks in uh, less than a 24-hour period uh, on a Friday and Saturday. He was Most Valuable Player voted by the team in 1986, team captain in 1986, and leading scorer with 27 points in 1986. So very outstanding uh, career there at Metro. Rocky Mountain Intercollegiate Soccer voted to the All-Star Game in 1985 and 86, and scoring in both years and scoring the winning goal in 1985. Uh, Metro State was one of his special places to be. He graduated in 1987 with a Bachelor of Science in Accounting. He was also a founding member of the Metro State Ice Hockey Club, which, yeah, is a special talent there, huh? Metro, or, uh, Martin's hard work and determined, dedicated, and driven spirit continued after Metro. He went on to become a certified public accountant and has 20 years plus experience and is a very successful business person. In 2011, he was a founder of the Dog Nation Hockey Foundation. Yes. <laughs> This foundation has raised over 1.6 million since its inception, helping families in need in our community. Fantastic work, Martin. In 2012, he was picked as a Channel 7 Everyday Hero for his work in the community. In 2012, he was also picked in 2014 and 12 as the finalist of the Youth Soccer Coach of the Year. Colorado Rapids, Community Award winner in 2014 for his work with youth soccer. Placed second in the Major League Soccer Community Award voting in 2014. This award is given out to people who use soccer to improve lives of others. In 2015, he was voted a CBS News 4 Game Changer Award for his work in the community. His foundation was awarded the Chanda Hilton Spirit of Generosity Award in 2015 for the generosity to the spinal cord community. In 2015, he was named as one of the 50 top alumni in Metro State history. That's pretty special there. Congratulations. The selection committee here at Metro is done proud by selecting Martin. You will never meet a more dedicated, determined, or driven person to help out in this community. Dr. Grant mentioned that uh, uh, athletics here at Metro it creates future leaders. Well, you're seeing the future right here with Martin. It's, it's there now. Yeah. It's my honor and privilege to announce into the 2017 Metro State University of Denver Athletic Hall of Fame, Martin Richardson. Well, thank you, everyone. Uh, big thanks to Mike. Great job there, buddy. Uh, Anthony said, we don't know the impact here. I do, and this is a really, really big deal to me. And I can't tell how honored I am to be in front of you guys today here. I um, also want to thank, thank everyone for the incredible turnout tonight. I heard this is a, a record crowd for this, and um, it's humbling with so many people coming here for me tonight. And um, 
beyond appreciative. So thank you very much, you guys. First off, Hall of Famer. Wow. <laughs> uh, I really didn't think, we got some young people here, and I'm not so young. I, I really didn't think this was something that was going to ever happen to me, and, um, but here I am. Uh, as I prepared for this evening, I look back at over the accomplishments and sharing the stage with the, the fellow inductees and the, fellow, uh, and the former soccer players that followed before me. There were some eye-popping stats. There were some amazing accomplishments. Honestly, I started to question, do I really belong? And then a thought came to me. We all have moments, forks in the road. It's what we do with those moments that define us, make us who we are. Sometimes those decisions are uncomfortable, difficult, hard to embrace. But they're the ones that are necessary to reach your goals and the level of excellence that everybody in this room is capable of. What I love best, best about MSU Denver is it gives students an option, and in some cases, a second chance. It's a place where students might not fit in elsewhere, but can thrive here. It's a place that can give you the tools to literally change the world. I'm immensely proud to be a Denver uh, a Metro State alum, and I could not be more honored than I am right now to stand before you guys. Like many, my route to Denver, Metro State Denver, was an improbable one. And nobody could envision, even me, me standing up here today. Back in the 1980s, I was a pretty good high school soccer player. I was getting some high school looks after a record-setting junior year at, high, at Golden High School. Unfortunately, life can have many moments that change your path. One of those happened to me in my very first game of my senior year. we just beaten Green Mountain High School, a powerhouse in Colorado, Colorado soccer. Unfortunately, in that, that game, I shattered my shoulder in 22 places, essentially ending my high school career and putting my soccer, college soccer career in doubt before it even started. But it didn't. The summer before my freshman year, here at Metro State. My dad asked me, he's sitting right there, if I was gonna play soccer at the school. Sounded like a pretty good idea, but the problem was the school had no interest in me. But my dad did what any proud pops would do. He picked up the phone and he called legendary coach Temer. And he told him how awesome his son is. My dad may have stretched the truth, literally, to try and convince Harry to give me a chance. Coach Temer told my dad, I was welcome to try out, but I, I'd only have a slim to none chance to make the team. But it was a chance. During the first week of practice, things were a lot different back then at Metro. I was honestly thinking to myself, what did I get myself into? The field was filled with over 100 players trying out for this team, many with incredible skill. Some of them actually had competed internationally. Some of the top high school players in the state were out there. There were even some ex-pros. Rules were a little lax back then in the day. <laughs> Needless to say, I looked around that field, and I really thought my days were numbered. But that was my moment. I survived that first week of tryouts. But only 25 or so guys were going to make that team. During the second week, we were separated in, in pairs for a one-on-one -on -one drill. I was up against Dan Coffey. Dan Coffey was a starting defender, much bigger, much stronger than me. But I had quickness and speed over him. As the coaches stood and watched this drill, I dominated Dan in every way. He got pretty frustrated, and I know I caught the coach's attention. 
I was feeling pretty good about myself. We went for a little water break, and that's when my bubble burst. I was in earshot of head coach Harry Temmer and his assistant coach Bill Chambers. And Bill said to Harry, that little guy's really good, but he's too small to ever play college soccer. We really need to think about cutting him. But that was my moment. Honestly, Coach Chambers was probably right. And I could have given up right there. But instead, I chose to have that motivate me. From then on, it was my mission to prove him wrong. I ended up making those cuts after a couple weeks. I was redshirted that first year. And in the offseason, I dedicated myself to getting bigger and stronger. I had 15 pounds of muscle, but I was still just as fast and just as quick. And I was ready to seize my opportunity. My soccer career at Metro culminated my, at my senior banquet with then head coach Bill Chambers, that same Bill Chambers, handed me the team MVP award, saying in front of the entire crowd, cutting this guy would have been one of the biggest mistakes of my coaching career. That was one of the proudest moments of my soccer career. You all met my good friend Mike Wachter a couple minutes ago. I want to take a moment to let you know why I chose Mike to be my presenter tonight. For everyone that plays team sports, there seems to be one player over your career that uh, you have a special connection with, almost a sixth sense. For me, hands down, that was you, Mike. When I told Mike about the Hall of Fame induction, he instantly congratulated me, and his response was, I think I had 18 assists in my career and 17 were to you. Pretty sure he's right. Let me tell you another story about that guy, Mike. Midway through our 1986 season, we took a road trip down to Albuquerque. And we played a really good Division I University of New Mexico team. Things were a little different back then. We used to play a lot of Division I programs back when I played. Scouting wasn't great, but word was out that I was having a really good year scoring a lot of goals. So New Mexico coaching staff countered. They answered with putting a big, fast, strong guy on me, shadowing my every move. Not surprisingly, I barely touched the ball that day. With me out of the mix, Mike literally took over the game. By far the best player on the field that day. With about 10 minutes left, we were playing, hanging with this team that was really actually quite a bit better than us. The score was still 0-0. Mike broke through their defense and was fouled in the penalty area, giving us a penalty kick. He, he walked up to me with that ball, and he said, win this one for us. I literally hadn't done anything all day, but I did slot that penalty kick in the corner. And we hung on for the last 10 minutes, and we, we upset New Mexico with a 1-0 win that day. We stayed the night in, in, um, in Albuquerque that night. And uh, the next morning, we're having breakfast, team breakfast. This guy, Mike, proudly walks over with a sports page from the Albuquerque News there. And uh, I'll read the headline. Um, it says, Richardson leads Metro State to upset win over Lobos. I knew, and I know he knew, that headline could not have been further from the truth. Most people would have taken that as a major slight, but not my friend Mike. Instead, he chose to show off that article who anybody, to anybody would want to read it. Because that's who you are, Mike. Unselfish and the ultimate teammate. <laughs> Mike, it's my turn to return the favor. I've been saying this for 25 plus years. In my opinion, you're the most underrated player to ever pull on a Metro jersey. And I can say with 100% certainty, I would not be standing here right now if it wasn't for you. Thank you, buddy. But that's actually not the only reason I chose Mike to introduce me tonight. 
Mike's impact on me on the field is actually uh, off of the field is actually far greater than it is on the field. Tonight, he's here with his wife Desiree, sitting right next to him there. On October 28, 2003, Mike and Des welcomed their second daughter, Melena Elizabeth, into this world, appearing perfect in every way. That all changed just four months after that when little Melena was diagnosed with infant leukemia. Melina spent the next several months in the hospital with Desiree by her side for every moment. She battled hard, but she lost that battle on October 7, 2004. After that tragic day, I watched in awe as Mike and Des put the pieces of their life back together. And they used their grief and sadness in an incredibly unselfish way. Starting the Melena Walker Foundation as a way to help families in similar situations. Des has spearheaded this wonderful organization. They've donated literally thousands of dollars and more importantly, touched the lives of literally hundreds of families facing similar challenges. That was their moment and they chose to make it a very special one. Desiree and Mike, the world needs more people like you. <laughs> Watching Mike and Des led me to another moment in my life. On April 10th, 2010, I lost a dear friend, Jack Kelly. Jack was a friend, a fellow hockey teammate, a sounding board, and a mentor. After his passing, I vowed to his three daughters that I would do something in their dad's honor, something special. Following the lead of you, Des, and Mike, that moment led me to the formation of Dog Nation Hockey Foundation, something that I am incredibly proud of. Initially designed to help a teammate in need, Dog Nation has turned into one of Colorado's fastest growing charities. As Mike mentioned, generating over $1.6 million in over, just over six years, but more importantly, aiding 80 families when they need it the most. One of those was just this morning over at the Pepsi Center. What I'd like to say now is I'm honored here to have two of those recipients with us, two very special people, Cody Beekman, over that way. Uh, and Dave Rapture right over here. I'm going to start with Cody. On October 31st, 2011, Cody's life changed forever. Cody was a normal 21-year-old attending a party, having a good time. Who doesn't? Instead of getting behind the wheel, Cody did what we wish all our kids would do. He picked up the phone and he made a decision to get a ride and pick up his car the next morning. But in a cruel twist of irony, the, Cody, the car Cody was a passenger in was then struck by a drunk driver paralyzing Cody. Along the way, Cody became a recipient of Dog Nation Hockey Foundation and a friend of mine. We've had many, many deep conversations and several of those centered around what's next. That led to Cody's next moment. This is where MSU Denver comes in. I was able to introduce to Cody to members of the staff at Metro State. Cody took it from there. Today, I'm proud to share that Cody is an MSU student in the journalism department and he's kicking ass. The second story I want to tell you guys tonight is one of courage, survival, determination, and true love. On July 3rd, 2015, Dave Repture's life changed forever, setting in motion a chain of events that has him sitting here today. On that faithful day, Dave was a flight nurse on a helicopter crash in Summit County. He escaped the wreckage, but was soaked in fuel. 
When Dave looked back, his friend and pilot, Patrick Mahaney, was still in the burning wreckage. That was Dave's moment. Without hesitation, Dave went back in to save his friend. Unfortunately, the helicopter erupted into flames, taking Patrick's life and leaving Dave with burns over 90% of his body. After several months in a coma, Dave awoke with his beautiful wife, Amanda, who's sitting right there by, himself, by his side. Since then, Dave has had countless moments. And each time, he's chosen to push forward. Today, he is honestly, honestly a miracle. And an inspiration to many, including me. All I, and I can guarantee you, that there are many, many more chapters to this guy's life. That is a hero right there, you guys. That brings me to the next chapter in my life. Today, I have yet another moment in front of me. And this is a really, really big moment. With the growth of Dog Nation and the incredible support of many, I have made the decision to take a leap of faith and lead this organization into a full-time position in the construction of the world's first three-sheet hockey rink designed for both disabled and able-bodied athletes alike. I know this is a grandiose plan, and one that is only possible with the support of many, an entire army of folks, many of you that I know are here tonight with me. This facility would be the home to men, women, children, disabled, able-bodied athletes alike, breaking down barriers and changing the face of amateur sports forever. Leaving your job of 24 years, which I'm going to do, to follow your destiny is scary, unknown, and probably to some of you guys out here, reckless. But in my heart of hearts, I know that this is what I've been placed here to do. And I know this is my moment. We all have moments, but that's what we do. But what we do with those moments is what defines us, what makes us who we are. Some of those moments don't make sense, Cody Beekman. Some of those moments don't seem fair, Dave Repture. Some are, are uncomfortable to embrace, Mike and Des. Some are life-changing, probably all of you here. But in order to achieve greatness, you must embrace your moment. Everyone in this room is capable of great things. Capable than more than you, than you realize. So ask yourself, what are you going to do with your moment? My advice to you, step out of your comfort zone. Embrace your challenge. Enjoy every minute of the ride. And I cannot wait to see your next chapter. Thank you and God bless.